Welcome to the Goody Room, your one-stop shop for everything movies, TV, and more. We know you want the goodies. Welcome into the Goody Room. I'm Matt the Notches. With me always is the Rod Tidwell to my Jerry Maguire, Frankie Rock. How are we doing, Frank? Good, good, good. You know, just in a great mood, um, ready to talk about some topics. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go, too. You know, Frank and I are in a great mood. You know why? Because we saw the new Deadpool and Wolverine. And guess what? We're going to be talking about it in today's episode. And it's a banger. But we do have a full list of topics to get through. We have a little retro council. We have a bunch of streamer bots. You know, Frank's been to the movie theater quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. So we got some new movies to talk about, uh, some new shows that came out. Uh, and we're also going to talk about a little news, a little news to just end a, the episode. Just a little news. You might have heard of it. You might not have. Who knows? If you're, if, if you're a fan of this podcast, you probably have heard this news. But we're going to talk about it. Yeah, we're going to talk about it, you know, we'll get we'll get into that. But, you know, up first, we got Retro Council. So, you know, again, this segment here is we're going to bring a retro recommendation. So this isn't really anything new that's currently on, you know, out in theaters or, you know, new from a streaming service. It's just, a, you know, an old movie or a classic that, you know, Frank and I would like to revisit every once in a while. And, you know, we kind of hinted to this the last episode, but we're going to talk about Euro Trip. So this came out, you know, Frank, what, the 2004? I think we were both in high school. Yep, it's uh, officially 20 years old. It's almost old enough to drink. The, uh, next year, it'll be old enough to drink. But this is a classic movie about a group of friends who just graduated high school, and one of them, the main character, Scotty, uh, he has a pen pal in Germany that he thinks is a guy, and it turns out to be a girl. And uh, he gets, you know, a little intoxicated one night, says a couple things that he doesn't mean. And after he realizes it's a girl, he tries to go to Europe and, you know, find her. And he brings his friends around along for like a crazy ride. And it's it's a super funny movie. A lot of jokes that probably wouldn't fly today. But oh, there, there is no way. I mean, if you would make this first, off, this movie just would not be made today. Um, but there, there's no way any of these jokes would be put into the comedies. To, it just wouldn't work. No way. No, not at all. But uh, it, it also has, I think, one of our favorite Matt Damon cameos. Uh, he's the lead singer of a band. And this is a classic song that millennials everywhere know. Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it never gets old. I mean, we we watched it. I was out of Frank's house a couple weeks ago, and he put it on, and we watched it again. And I mean, it's just it still hits like it's day one. We were there with my wife, uh, my brother, and our non sponsor. And uh, you know, we had it, it's funny that Matt brings up the Scotty doesn't know Matt Damon uh, cameo because we actually had to explain to my brother that it was Matt Damon. He didn't know. Uh, and it's funny because we then went on to t proceed to tell him that secretly Matt Damon is the king of cameos. Like he, he is, he pops up everywhere. And it's funny because my brother didn't believe us. So I sent him a photo today of, uh, you know, Matt Damon in a movie where he was all dressed up and in, in disguise. I said, Nick, do you realize this is Matt Damon? Right. And he goes, Oh my God, really? And I said, yes, again, he is the king of cameos. Like he's, he could be in any movie. You just never know. Yeah. He should stick to cameos. <laughs> right. You know, it's the it was like when we reviewed Oppenheimer. It's the perfect amount of Matt Damon. Like, you don't he doesn't need to be a main character. Just like put him on one of these side characters that pops up like handful of scenes. We're good. And Eurotrip was only one scene, which was perfect for me. But you know, I digress. Um, Eurotrip is just such a great time. Um, it was great to revisit it. It it had been so long since I last watched it. I honestly forgot about certain parts. So it was like discovering them for the first time again. And it just is really funny. But, you know, Matt and I, we we quote multiple scenes all the time. And it's it's funny when someone else realizes like, hey, that's they're like, oh, hey, that's from Eurotrip. And it's like, oh, someone else knows this movie or remembers this movie. 
Yeah, I think I think the main one we do it. It's, it's such an insignificant scene. Right? So insignificant. <laughs> and they're out to like eat. First of all, where did these kids get this money to go to these like European restaurants? Right. Oh, I know. Well, I mean, it was two thousand four. Was the economy in a better spot? If I remember, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's still right. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but they're like planning out like the places they're gonna go, and the one uh, you know member of the group he wants to go see like all these like historical like places and stuff like that. And so he puts like a little piece of bread down, like, Oh, we could see this place. And uh, they pick it up and he, they go, if there's time, <laughs> if there is time, I actually was out in the driveway, hanging out with some of our neighbors um, over the weekend. And I got up to go get myself a drink out of our, our fridge. And um, my wife goes, Hey, get, get our son's water. And as I stood up, I just was like, Ugh if there's time and one of the neighbors started cracking up and she said, is that Euro trip? And I said, Oh, I said, you have went from here to here for me. That you just status is elevated. If you know that that quote is from Euro trip. I looked at, I looked at her husband. And I said, I just want to let you know, she's much cooler than you now. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, but anyways, go check it out. I don't think it's available on any streaming service. Frank actually had to pop in his DVD, which wasn't formatted for his TV. And we no, had because it's the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> movies just weren't for movies from twenty years ago. Just were not formatted for today's TVs. It just it, it Matt Matt. I always laugh when Matt tells a story about Gladiator. Um, but it's just. Yeah, it, it's a real problem for us uh, DVD Blu-ray collectors if you have an old one, and chances are your TV doesn't play it as it should anymore. Yeah, so you know, before we move on to what Frank's talking about is I had the same problem with Gladiator. I was I really just wanted to watch it. Uh, it's a great movie, right? So I, I had a DVD. I put it in the Blu-ray player, DVD player, and I got to the menu because you know the, the movies have menus, right? And you hit yeah. play. And uh, <laughs> I got to the menu and it was so grainy. I was like, oh, this won't do. I immediately <laughs> bought it on digital. <laughs> I, uh, so it's funny that you mentioned it though. Like, I remember I didn't have Gladiator on DVD, I had Gladiator on VHS. So <laughs> I know I, I remember finding it on Blu ray one Black Friday, and that's the one I still have. Um, so I think I'll still get another five or so years out of that Blu ray before I probably will have to bite the bullet and buy it again. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, anyways, go check it out. Let us know what you think. Uh, we're gonna get moving on here into our streamer botch section of the show. So, again, these are movies, shows that we've seen recently, and we're gonna tell you whether it's a stream, meaning it's worth your time, or we think it's a botch. Maybe, you know, move on, pick something else. And the first one we got up here is Twisters. And, Frank, you actually saw this in theaters. I did. I did. I got my permission slip signed. And I was sent off to the movies by myself and it was fine because I went like opening night, which I haven't gone to an opening night movie, uh, a movie on opening night. I couldn't tell you the last time and I forgot just how like packed and the energy of the crowd was. Everybody was so pumped to see this movie. There was not a seat open in the theater. It was great. We're all packed in there like sardines. Everybody is just like, you know, Mostly people uh, Matt and I's age or older. Some people brought their kids, which I was I thought was awesome. It's like, okay, you clearly showed your kids Twister, and now you're bringing them for this one. So good for you guys. Like, let's go. Um, you know, if you recall from our episode when we were talking about our our summer movies, this was my most anticipated. I could not wait to see this movie. And the the thing about it is I wasn't really expecting much out of this movie other than I just want to see some tornadoes and I just want to see some crazy action. And it delivered um, on those points. Matt was asking before the episode, why not just call it Twister since it's a remake? Well, in a way, it is a remake, but also it is a sequel um, there. The connection to the first movie from the 90s with Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt it comes and goes in a blink and you miss it cameo where it's right at the beginning. And this, this doesn't really spoil anything, but um, they show that the team of scientists is using um, the Dorothy unit from the first movie that they were using to send up all the, uh, the things that send the signals back from mm -hmm. the tornado. 
and th they show Dorothy and the guy like hits it on the side. He goes, oh, man, this thing rarely works anymore. And that's really it. Um, I was seeing online people say there's more, but I miss them. And, you know, I, I thought it was smart of them not to continue on with any of the characters from that movie since Bill Paxton has passed away. And they set a new set of characters. They they were off and they did their own thing. Um, I thought it was fine. I didn't think it was anything like special, but I, I was very entertained. But I got the sneaky suspicion, Matt, that there is a version of this script with the original characters in those like shoehorned in like legacy character roles. Like probably I, I will I will give you the biggest example. The main character is a young lady this time around. Um, and we get to meet her mom about halfway through. And first thing, it's the mom from Liar Liar, who is also in um, the Iron Claw and just happy that she's still getting work. It's like, look at you. You're you're in two movies this year. Good for you. But you you can't help but feel that this lady was originally supposed to be Helen Hunt's character from the original movie. Like and then there was another character that would have would have been like Philip Seymour Huffman's character. It just you you saw where the the original characters would have fit in. So but. I think it was smart of them to go and uh, create their own path. We had Hangman from Top Gun Maverick, aka my wife's boyfriend, according to her. Uh, yeah, he's also he's also the Wall Street banker that Bane smashes off the keyboard. So that's what so he why gets. Oh, here. The, why are you people? <laughs> yeah, but he he was in the movie. He's like the new Bill Paxton s character and. He, he, you know, he plays a typical uh, hangman role. I'll just leave it at yeah. that. Um, he, I, he's starting to be like typecast as that type of character. Right. But you know what? He does very well at That's that character. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you're good at it, go right. for it. And, you know, hey, why, well, you're, you're, I, I like to see, I, I always like to see um, when new actors who are actually good or good enough, so to speak, keep showing up in new things and you know kind of uh, saturate the market with themselves it's just like okay good we have an up, up and coming generation but as far as like me recommending this movie i would not tell you to rush out to the theater and see it i know people are like you got to go see it on imax it's the best movie since top gun maverick it's not it i mean it was fine like don't get me wrong like i was entertained i i did enjoy it hold but on, I, hold on. Who, who says this is the best movie since Top Gun Maverick? I, I saw, uh, um, you know, like how when you see a preview for a movie, it comes up with like the Wall Street Journal said this or whatever. Oh, um, that is such BS. <laughs> right. Don't get me wrong. Like I was entertained, but uh, you, you, you were texting me right after I saw it and you were like, oh, I got to get out to the theater and see it. And I just immediately told you, wait for it to be on HBO Max. Watch the original again. And, you know, this movie is fine, but I will tell you the original and I might be just like sentimental for the original. Who knows? I you, thought you re I remember you saying that because this was this was one I was interested in going to see. And my wife really likes, you know, she's in the weather and stuff like that. And I was right. trying to track her to the theater to go see it, too. Um, but when you said that, I was like, OK, I'll just stay home. Right. And the, the biggest and here's here's why, where it falls short of the original. When you think of the original, you can clearly say, like, I love the part when the tornado came through and did this or, you know, the cow went by or, you know, the F5 finally arrived. There was really not the, the tornadoes really didn't have a presence like they did in that first one. And that's that's what I truly wanted. You know, um, they took a different. That's the whole point of the movie. That's the whole point of the movie. Right. You get the tornadoes. Right. But they take a different approach with it, which I think was, you know, OK, change it up. But also you got to understand people come for the carnage like this. These are the type of movies that were in the in the 90s where you'd have these disaster type movies. And it was just like destruction porn, for lack of a better phrase. You get a little bit of that, but it just it just didn't hit the same way the first one did for me. That's disappointing. Right. Uh, I, I want to see a tornado mess stuff up. That's why right. I want it. Exactly. Um, definitely watch it when it hits HBO Max. It's a Warner Brothers movie. So I would assume probably by October, it will be on HBO Max. Yeah. I, I, 
it, maybe even earlier than that because if it you know if it doesn't do all that well usually they're pretty quick to release it oh it's doing well um i will tell you like it it's not making top gun maverick money but it is it is making you know they they made it in a similar way where they're like hey we're not trying to send a message out to anybody this is just an this is this movie is here to entertain you you're going to escape for about an hour and 40 minutes and then you're going to go home um they're not trying to say anything with it so it you know and i know like just by word of mouth and reading what people have been saying on the internet and just talking to people around my hometown a lot of people have been going to see it so when i went to see deadpool and wolverine there was a whole like they deadpool and wolverine was next to a theater that was showing twisters and i walked by and i saw the theater was still packed so it's still making it's that's 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 ridiculous there's no the, you know i don't know what people are thinking with this stuff that's got to be a nostalgia thing with it is know. oh it is that's right. absolutely the only reason but you know it's it's one of those things and matt we're gonna fall i mean we're we're going to be the biggest culprits of this it's like this movie was awesome when i was a kid now they're bringing it back and we're gonna grab our kids and we're gonna go you know what i mean yeah, but we also though are smart enough to go in and say it this probably isn't going to be that good, right? Right. Or we just like we we do at times too. We'll we'll deter from going because we know it's just going to be released on streaming like a month and a half, two months after the release. Sure. And you know, but honestly though for for you're trying to get out with your family and see a movie, um, you could absolutely, you could do a lot worse um, than. Yeah. Right. So wait for streaming. That's what I would say. Um, don't rush to the theater. Cool. Yeah. That's the, that's the advice you gave me. And that's the one I'm taking too. All right. Up next, we got the acolyte. I do not know <laughs> what they were thinking with this. Ser- I was excited for this, right? All yeah. the Star Wars series like have been amazing so far. Really great, right? Maybe Boba Fett wasn't as good, but it was still it was still entertaining. I watched it, right? This is the worst out of all the series. For our two audience members that have no idea what the acolyte is, why don't you why don't you spin them a little uh, tale real quick? So it's a, another Star Wars series out on Disney Plus, uh, and basically this is prior to the Sith and like the whole Palpatine, Anakin Skywalker series, and it's about you know like this. I guess he's technically a Sith Lord. And he's looking for an al- an acolyte, basically like a Padawan, someone to, to train underneath him. And uh, he finds this girl who has some force abilities and he uses her. He, he tells her, basically, if you want to be trained by me, you have to complete like these tasks, kind of prove yourself. And her tasks are to go and kill these Jedi with basically being unarmed and have them attack her first. So that's my little spiel about it. That's that's all it deserves. I mean, was there? I, there, there really isn't much more. Which it, you know, I'm not saying that Star Wars has ever been this like insane, in depth, um, story driven thing. It has its story, right? But it doesn't go like too too deep beyond good versus evil. But even for Star Wars standards, that's extremely hollow. I mean, like. And you you said this too, right? Because you didn't make it very far in the series. I think you watched like one or two episodes. So I I I made it to the episode which has since become an internet meme where we meet up with a group of witches and they're like, power of one, power of two, power of many. And I immediately just hit the power button on the TV and I said, I am done with this show. I just, I can't do it. Um, you know, if you're one of the people out there that like the show, good for you, watch it. But it wasn't for me. Um, and it was like one or two episodes in and I texted Matt when I was watching the first episode. And I, I honestly know this and believe this. I've helped, I've co-directed high school musicals 
that had better production value than this show has. It's uh, unexcusable how terrible this show looks. And that's that's what I think did it for me too. I mean, even the the Jedi robes look, you know, cheap, right? Yeah. Like the makeup on some of the characters super cheap. I mean, the one the main like Jedi woman is like this green like character. It's literally just green like paint all over her body. Like right. and, she's and I'm, I'm sitting there like that's not interesting yeah. at all like, no spe specifically from star wars that it was like they built their foundation on like pushing forward what was cap you know what was possible with makeup and special effects you know it just it's like it it kind of was like to me oh how the mighty have fallen and a lot of you know i, I talked to a couple people that were like well you didn't like it because it focused on this it's like no i didn't like it because there was no story it looked like crap. And, you know, I honestly have been more entertained watching paint dry on the wall. In the story, it, it like, it doesn't really make sense in my no. opinion and how it, it like this feeds into the other series and like the whole like actual star Wars that we all know and love. And, you know, that's what kind of killed it for me and and i would i'd keep watching hoping that something would change it would get better like you know they had this villain and i didn't think he was all that sinister like i the costume design on him looks like super cheap halloween like dollar store get up right i mean they didn't go to spirit halloween for this they went to dollar general to get this guy's costume yeah, it's literally like a, a helmet with like a little like slit you could barely see through and he's got like sleeves chopped off and stuff like that. And it's just like it's you didn't put any thought into this. It, you, it, it literally just feels like you just pump this out to put out some content. And I mean, if you like it, hey, good for you. But I mean, it was a botch for me and I, I'm really disappointed by this. Yeah. And, you know, Matt, I'm not like a lore person. You know, there's lore to Star Wars. There's lore to Lord of the Rings. Like people go real deep with this sort of thing. Right. You know, you, you get on YouTube. They got the, the Tolkien or Lucas scholars or whatever. But even I was recognizing that when they were doing certain things, I was like, oh, wait a minute. No, that according to everything that's come before this, that should be impossible. Like this yeah. shouldn't be happening. And they were just very like they were playing fast and loose with that. And that's not why I was faulting it. But I, I, I remember just saying to myself, I was like, ooh, there's going to be some fans really mad. And from what I've seen in the news and YouTube, everybody's mad. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I think I've said this a couple of times as I was watching that. I was like, these have to be the worst Jedi in the history yeah. of Je Jedi Order for them not to see this stuff coming half the time. <laughs> like, it right. is amazing to me and you're right like this is star wars is one of those you know things that there's a very deep and rich fandom too and they don't like when you mess with the whole the whole theory and storyline and how things like were originally put in place and you know a lot of a lot of these creators behind star wars nowadays this show included when the creators are being interviewed to promote the show they will blatantly just say like hey you know, we are going to change things. And if you know what, you're in charge and that's, you know, you're getting paid the money. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But like, don't be mad when the fans are one, not watching it, but two, like fight back a little bit. Like you have to know that's going to come if you're going to rock the boat. Um, you know, I, I will tell you like this, the episodes that I did see left such a sour taste in my mouth that I'm honestly like, Disney Star Wars is kind of on thin ice with me um, after this one. And if you're a fan of Disney Star Wars, by all means, love it, watch it, whatever. But I think I'm just going to go back to the, you know, just keep the original trilogy, the prequels, and that's going to be my Star Wars for now on. Yeah, right. They can't take that from me. So, you know, it's it's a botch. I, if you want to check it out, check it out. All all episodes are now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I don't think it's worth your time. Go watch something else. Right. Look at the wall instead or go outside and play. Yeah. <laughs> well, next up, we got Cobra Kai. And I, I put the first half because... What a what a tease, Netflix, right? I thought we were getting the whole season. 
honestly, and I might have missed it, Matt, in the promotion where they were like, hey, part one coming now, part two coming whenever. I don't know if they promoted that it was going to be because like I'm I'm literally and, you know, folks, this doesn't I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's become a well a well-known tradition with me and Cobra Kai at least once per season. I like fly off the couch and I'm like screaming at the TV. Well, this moment came right at the end of the last episode that they gave us where I'm literally screaming at the TV traitor and like all ready to go for the next episode, the credits hit. And then they say, we'll see you in November for the next half. I was like, wait, what, what do you mean next half? No, no. We, cause I, I, this Cobra Kai is a show. Like I will binge the whole season in a day. Shamelessly. What like well, my thing Netflix like what's the thought process behind this right Are you trying to keep my subscription like I, I would have canceled a long time ago after like your third rate increase Right you You've know? had me You've had us ball and chain for like twenty years now Back when you were still sending DVDs in the mail We're not going anywhere Okay Yeah Exactly Just give me all the episodes because it because you're right and like the minute you texted me because you finished before me. I did. I and did. I saw, when I saw that final episode, and I was like, you know, I knew they were going to do this. They're going to leave us on a cliffhanger right at a pivotal, like, turning point in this series. And, and now you got to wait till November. Right. Like, I see if you did, like, what was, there was a couple series where you only had to wait, like, maybe a couple of weeks. And then yeah. the other episodes. But th- months? Months, months? yeah. Even Stranger Things didn't make us. The, Stranger Things was like three weeks. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like now, it, we're we're all fans of Cobra Kai, right? Like we, right. I couldn't wait for this season to come out. I'm really curious to see how this ends and stuff like that. But I mean, <laughs> the first half was good. I, I liked will it. say, um, uh, cliffhanger tease ending aside, and only given us half. What I've what we've been given so far. I'm pumped, dude. I am pumped. Like, oh, I got goosebumps thinking about it. I love this show. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. It had a, I, a smile on my face just seeing, you know, the characters again and seeing where right. they're taking it. And I love where the story's going. So I, I can't wait for November. That's part of the reason why I think Frank and I are <laughs> so worked up about it because it just, it sucks. We have to wait. So and and not only that, and I, I understand five listeners there was the writer's strike there was the actor's strike but i feel like this season has been like you know ha- it, it was a long time coming so there was already a wait and to only give us five and then cut us off to make us wait more like it's criminal we should get like a month of uh, um subscription back for this try you know this atrocity yeah right okay. anyway it's, it's a stream watch it's the first stream. half it's Absolutely yeah you'll get the second half of november and we'll tell you about the second half then <laughs> all right now to the good stuff deadpool and wolverine spoiler free all right we're not spoiler gonna... free you know it's it was that entertaining of a movie frank actually saw it before me uh <laughs> and I'm really glad he did not text me anything about this movie because the amount of cameos and references is it's a it's a total fan film stuff like if you're a real fan of these characters in Marvel you've been waiting for a film like this you know for for a while and I was telling Frank that this might be one of the best Marvel movies I've seen since uh, Avengers Endgame. And if you've been following along in our episodes, you might be thinking like, whoa, Frank went to see this. I thought he was off superhero movies. Correct. I was. But, you know, um, my wife was gracious enough. She said, hey, you know, you've been you've been here all summer long. Um, Why don't you get out, get some fresh air, go go do something you like. I want to see this. And I thought, you know what? I'll go see Deadpool because, I, you know, I grew up watching Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Because I didn't invite you to go see Deadpool with me. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this real quick. Get it out of the way. Uh, Lazaro and my brother um, decided to go see Deadpool, and uh, they didn't invite me. They didn't invite me. So I got petty and said, well, I'm going to go, um, and I'm going to see it before you, So, and then I'm going to spoil it all for you. 
But as I was sitting there, I was like maybe 10 minutes into the movie. I said, this is so good that I, it would be, a, it would be a crime against humanity if I would spoil it for them. So I would, you got to give me credit. I was radio silence for like those three days in between. I, I immediately said to your brother when the credits started rolling, I said, I don't know how your brother was able to keep all that in. That was a lot. <laughs> Thank you. It, you know, I, it, it was, it was a good effort on my part, but that without this again, doesn't spoil anything. Um, I'm not saying I'm back on superhero movies, but man, this was, it definitely hit the right notes for me. Uh, I found it to be refreshing. Here's why I can't tell you the last time that I laughed so hard for so long in a, like a two hour period. I, it just, it, it was really refreshing. It was so funny. Um, there, and just the joy of seeing these, um, cameos come, like it was like, Oh, almost thrilling to me, especially if you've been a fan of these movies, as long as Matt and I have, um, just to see certain people show up and then see cameos, that you know were always rumored to happen and just never came to fruition or whatever and then they're like you know what? we're gonna do it here and the way that it's done it's just like oh my gosh like i had no idea like you guys were gonna do this <laughs> and, and that's that's as much as you guys are getting on this um but frank's point the part of the reason it's enjoyable for you frank is because you've seen those other movies right you know right. some history with some of these things so you understand the references right Unlike some other people that were sitting next to me, I didn't hear them laughing as much as I was laughing or like gasping when things happened. Cause I, I know the history I've seen this stuff. Right. But I was the same way. I, I just, I couldn't believe it. I was like, finally, after all these years, we finally get what we wanted. I mean, it's an absolute stream. I'm probably going to see it again this weekend. That's, I mean, I probably won't be able to uh, make it to see it again, but I didn't will, ask. I didn't well, ask. Here, here's the deal. I'm going to buy it. The moment it's up for digital, I'm buying it. But this this doesn't spoil anything because it's all it's all through the trailers and on the poster. And I know this is like, but whatever, I'm just going to say it. To see Hugh Jackman finally wear the Wolverine costume, because he never wore the, 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 the costume before. However, it's like, what, 24 years he's been in these movies, never once wore the yellow costume. And he's in it, like, almost literally the entire time. And it just is so great uh, just to see him in action and fighting that. Um, I, I just, uh, I, you know, what? maybe I'll try to sneak out and see it again. I have to <laughs> change my yeah, mind. I mean, yeah, it's like, that's, that's just one of the things, guys, like that. We've been waiting as fans, yeah, you know, ever since even you know Wolverine came into you know the big screen. We've been waiting for right, big and and <laughs> there are no shortages of jokes on like past decisions, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh. Made or like even characters or things going on with you know Disney and Marvel. It's super enjoyable. Go out and see it if you can. And that's one of the, the 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 one of the most funniest things about it. And like I commend Disney and Marvel for doing this. They weren't afraid to make fun of themselves in this movie. And you know, I will tell you know it's it's clear like Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman were like merciless against <laughs> Disney and Marvel. But like they they make basically everything the fans have been saying the last couple of years they they call out and they they comment on it and it it's just so great but all right if we talk any more on this movie i'm going to start spoiling i don't want to do it yeah you need to just shut your mouth i'm actually yep. going to come out there and so it shot so that you know they don't have to deal with this anymore. oh my gosh so you're going to make me deadpool from that really crappy wolverine movie <laughs> <laughs> it's, see there you go you spoiled another cameo <laughs> no that that didn't happen anyway let's go Let's get to the news. So the news, I mean, it's no shocker. We were probably going to talk about it, but a lot of you who listen probably already know what we're going to talk about. But we got to talk about Robert Downey Jr. being announced as uh, Victor Von Doom in the upcoming uh, Avengers movies. Robert Downey Jr. has been cast as Victor Von Doom. Well, a variant of either Tony Stark or Victor Von Doom. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. And he's coming back. Um, 
it's now clear that Marvel is done with Kang the Conqueror because um, Avengers 5 was originally titled the Kang Dynasty, which was going to lead into Avengers 6, uh, Avengers Secret Wars. Now Avengers 5 has been retitled Avengers Doomsday with Robert Downey Jr. returning for both movies and he is not playing Iron Man, which, okay, you know, we're now in, we're now deep into the multiverse with these characters. And after seeing, you know, Spider-Man, No Way Home, Loki, um, uh, Ant-Man, anything's possible with the, to, for people to come back and do this. But for it to be Robert Downey Jr., I feel as if, and Matt, you and I talked about this, it could be very good. Like, it, it could be excellent. But face value right now, like, you know, just heard the news. I feel like it's desperate not only on Disney's part, but on Robert Downey Jr.'s part as well. I don't know if it's de- on Robert Downey Jr.'s part. I think he's he's done well enough for himself. But I mean, he, I, did, he did just win an Oscar, so... Yeah. I, I I do think it's a bit desperate on Marvel. I think they know the state of things. Um, we just talked about Deadpool and Wolverine. When you when you see that movie, there's jokes even about it in there. That you know they know that things are not going well for them right now. They've made a lot of movies with you know I'll call them B list characters because that's what they are, right? They're not even B list. They're like C C level characters. Yeah, exactly. And even still, you could have a lot of success with those movies, but the writing hasn't been as good as it was previously. And I think a lot of that comes down to directing. And I have read that one of the reasons, one of the stipulations for Downey uh, coming back, Robert Downey Jr., was that the Russo brothers come back and direct these next two movies. And he w- he was not going to do it if they were not a part of those, those projects. Um, now... As far as Rob and they're Lee, back, by the way, we forgot to mention that they they have come back. They signed on for both movies. Yeah, they made they're they're part of the announcement. Um, you know when they they announced the Doctor Doom thing, but um, you know as far as Robert Downey Jr. coming back, I don't hate it, but it also kind of like kills the way they ended that character for me. You know, because that was such, I think, an epic moment in that whole Marvel series. And for you to bring him back, I think it is a desperate move, right? You you need to do something that's going to, like, get fans talking, maybe get him back in the theater. I've seen a couple of theories on what this storyline is going to be. Apparently, there is a few comics where uh, Tony Stark is Victor Von Doom, right? And... I don't know if they're going to go there yet, uh, but I've seen now, uh, you know, and again, uh, you know, we're not really spoiling anything, but now Marvel's kind of introduced this this thing, and you'll see it in Deadpool and Wolverine of these anchor beings. And so when an anchor being leaves that universe, that universe dies. And, uh, you know, in order to save that, you have to bring in, you know, a variant to replace that anchor beam. Right. And so someone kind of had a theory about, well, in the universe where Tony Stark died, that's the sacred timeline. If you remember Loki, right? The sacred timeline. Well, Tony Stark died there and maybe he's the anchor being of that universe. And now to save the world, they bring in another variant. Well, it's a variant though, from a timeline where, him and Victor Von Doom were like, this is what happens in the comics. They were like college roommates instead of Reed Richards. It was Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have an experiment. They partner together on this project and Victor actually ends up switching minds. Kind of like face off. You remember face off? Take a face off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. right. And, and so Tony Stark, even though on the outside has the appearances the intellect is all Victor Von Doom and he ends up, you know, becoming that and using all those resources. So I thought that was um, kind of a cool idea. We'll see where it goes. It could be just, he's just playing Victor Von Doom. So if he's not playing just Victor Von Doom, 
right? Like, let's say it, it's Tony Stark as Doctor Doom. Okay, fine, but I, I will say that I am going to give up all hope of ever seeing a great interpretation of Doctor Doom of the actual comic Doctor Doom on screen. And I was watching a few videos today on it, and they said, well, you know, they've done Doctor Doom in like three Fantastic Four movies. And it just didn't work. And it's like, I don't know if it, it didn't work because it's just the character. I think that it didn't work because the movie surrounding him just sucked. But, you know, so I guess why not try something new? But I just I, I wish it wasn't Downey as of now. Like in a few years time, I might be saying like this was a stroke of genius. But I want to talk about something else, though, um, with the Russos and Robert Downey Jr., the Russo brothers for both movies, each movie are going to make $80 million, which is an Outrage. astronomical amount for yeah. to direct a movie. Robert Downey Jr. Um, has signed on for a base salary. And if you I'm, I'm going to do a really bad job of explaining movie salaries and how actors get paid. But just buckle up. Typically get paid based on the success of the movie. Right. So. He gets paid a little bit, so he'll probably get paid like 10 million for each movie. But he's now going, but he and he did this with Avengers Endgame and Infinity War, but now he's getting more participation points, back end points off the, the success of the movie. He potentially could end up earning anywhere between 100 million, which is right now the most any actor has received for a movie. Tom Cruise got it for Top Gun Maverick, Will Smith got it. Okay, so. He's going to make up upwards to 100 to 120 million, which 100 million is currently the record of how much an actor has been paid for a movie. Tom Cruise made it for Top Gun Maverick. Will Smith made it for uh, Men in Black 3 of all movies. But so let's just say both these movies are massive successes, which they will be. They're, they're Avengers movies. They're going to make money. Robert Downey Jr. could potentially beat the record, but then have the record twice for how many, you know, how much an actor has been paid. And honestly, like I've, I've loved Robert Downey Jr. since the original Iron Man. Like he's been great in non Iron Man roles. Like if you want to fall down a good rabbit hole, hole fall down the Robert Downey Jr. filmography. It's, it's a good time. But like, um, it just blows my mind that like this is what the deal that was made for him to return and the Russos that's like the, the amount that they're paying the three of these guys is the amount of a small movie. You know, It's so funny because like the quotes that people are pulling from these Marvel movies, like, you know, you, you even did one the other day, like the Thanos quote, you could not deal with your fears. So where did that lead you? Back, back to, to me, me. Yeah. right and i brought up one from iron man 3 which i know like a lot of people don't like but i actually really enjoy iron man 3 and uh the villain there in his speech with tony stark he says you gave me the greatest gift of all desperation and that's how i felt like marvel is when they announced this right and you know i kevin feige is still in charge at marvel uh, the last couple of years have not been great, but you know, I you can chalk that up to they stretch themselves too far with multiple movies and TV shows. And now they've announced that, hey, that was a whoopsie. We're scaling back. You get like one TV show a year and maybe two movies at best. I think that's smart. Um, but you it it's clear, especially after seeing Deadpool, that they are now open about like, hey we messed up. We're trying to fix it. And it's no coincidence that they make the announcement that Downey's back the weekend that Deadpool is the number one movie in the world. You know, I, I would have liked to see them continue with the Kang thing and just recast the character. Cause I really right. did like the Kang character, but I did. We've been talking about it for years. How stoked are we to get finally get Victor Von doom? Right. And you know, Silver lining, excited. Um, before these Avengers six and or five and six come out, we're getting a Fantastic Four movie. You can't tell me that we're not going to get a taste, a taste just of a taste. down, just a taste of Victor Von Doom in that movie somehow, some way. We're, there's no way that they don't show him or introduce him, even if it's just like in a photo or something. 
or an end credit scene like yes. they did when they first Thanos first came into it, you know, be a thing, right? Because that's what they're doing now too. Like, go watch Deadpool and Wolverine. There's a. It, <laughs> I laughed during the credits. They kind of show this like little like. I hope you had the time of your life by Green Day, and play, they're showing all these clips from like the original X Men movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> And I, I like, I laughed. And then there's a, there's a scene at the very end of the credits, and like that's what Marvel they're going back to basics, basically yeah. with these. You know, like, like you said, they know they messed up. They're gonna go back to the formula that worked, that made them successful, that made them who they are. And I personally think, right? I mean, I, I work a corporate job. You got to pay for the talent. You know, if you want to continue to be successful, give those people a taste right continue to be successful together instead of taking a back seat and maybe downgrading a bit right right Which you gave that a go it didn't work i agree with you they spread themselves too thin trying to make you know kevin fight he, he can only do so much right 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 he's a guy he's spread across all these these different movies uh, and but the budget for these things is getting like you see the cameos and stuff. The budget for these things is just out out of this world. So and you know and there there I I saw some people commenting like you know in the comments like well if Downey's going to get paid that much, what about the other actors? I'm going to use Shang Chi as an example. Okay, I love the guy that plays Shang Chi. Um, he he's a great actor, very good. He was in a little show called Kim's Convenience on Netflix. You got to watch it. So funny. But Sean Chi did not make a billion dollars and it's not a proven franchise yet. When Sean Chi becomes a, uh, a proven franchise where each movie is making a billion dollars, he will make the Robert Downey Jr. money. You also got to understand Robert Downey Jr. was the very first actor in this franchise. He was the face of this franchise. He was he ushered in everybody else. He, he essentially is the godfather of this franchise. Like, yes, he's going to earn the money for almost. 12 years, every time there was a poster, Downey Jr.'s face was the forefront on those. But he was in the center. You know, they they always made made it clear, like, hey, guess who we got in this one, too? You know, but that's how Marvel always did those contracts, right? You kind of right. made, you know. You, it was kind of a proving ground and you had to get through the first couple of movies and you would make your money on future sequels. Right. right. So, but Hey, and anyways, it's, it's news. We'll see where they go with the story. I'm sure there'll be stuff that comes out, you know, as the years go on and we get closer to the release of uh, Avengers doomsday. I I'm just, I'm kind of excited to get Victor Von Doom. Still a little hesitant on the Robert Downey Jr. announcement, but you know he is a great actor, and you know I'm excited to see what happens. So, right, and I, I agree. You know, I I did have like two people in mind to play Victor Von Doom. One was Killian Murphy. Uh, mm -hmm. The other one was the Kingslayer from uh, Game of Thrones. I thought mm -hmm. both of them would be great, Victor Von Doom, but. You know, we could do a whole lot worse, and we have done a whole lot worse than Robert Downey Jr. And that's why I hope they go with the whole variant type of yeah. storyline, because I think that will play off the emotions of the other characters in the film as well, too. Like, to see that this face that was such a hero now be the face of a villain, right? You either die a hero, you either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. <laughs> Exactly. But can you imagine when Peter Parker sees Dr. Tony Stark, Dr. Doom, like that's going to like, that's going to be one of those scenes that like, like yeah. makes the whole, all the air in the theater is going to be sucked out. Yeah. And I, you know, it was, it was a funny thing I saw, you know, people were like, but did, did, did Tony Stark die? And someone is like a comment. It says comics 101. <laughs> No one ever dies in comics except for Uncle Ben. He's the only one that ever stays dead. <laughs> We've talked about this before. Um, yeah. You know, my my favorite example is Green Lantern literally sent himself, sacrificed himself into the sun to stop it from supernovaing, dies, only to return the next issue. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well... Like I said, we'll see where it goes, but hey, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. That's going to be it for us today. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Same streaming time, same streaming platform. Later, everybody.